Konnichiwa. Today, we're going to talk about Kansai Ben, because if you're doing any amount of immersion, whether it's anime or manga, children's novels, light novels, games, whatever, you're going to come across Kansai Ben, and you probably already have. So we're going to have a look at the basics, so that you're not lost when you encounter speakers of Kansai Ben. Now, Japan has a lot of regions and a lot of dialects, but the one you're going to encounter most of the time, if you encounter anything, is Kansai Ben. Why is that? Well, the standard Japanese language is called Hyojungo, which means standard language, and it's essentially Tokyo Ben, which became established as the standard because Tokyo is the capital of Japan. And also, Tokyo is not just the biggest city in Japan by a long way, it's the biggest city in the world by a long way. That's to say it's the largest conurbation in the world. The second and third largest are Delhi and Shanghai, and Tokyo is bigger than them by a very, very substantial margin indeed. And we're talking about size in terms of population here, so a pretty substantial proportion of Japanese people are in the Tokyo urban area. So the influence of Tokyo Ben is bound to be very large. But the second largest city in Japan is Osaka and the Osaka conurbation, which includes Kyoto and Kobe. And this is actually a lot bigger than you might have thought. It's bigger than the Los Angeles conurbation, it's bigger than New York, Moscow, or Karachi. So while it's the second biggest city in Japan, it's still a huge city by world standards. This means that while a substantial portion of the Japanese population lives in the Tokyo urban area, a substantial portion of those who don't live in the Tokyo urban area live in the Osaka urban area, and Kansai Ben also extends beyond this into the surrounding prefectures. So it's by a long way the second biggest dialect in Japan, which is why we hear so much of it. We don't just hear it in characters who are supposed to come from the Kansai region either, even in anime about other worlds, other realities. There will often be one or more Kansai-speaking characters in it. That's because Kansai Ben is often used just to represent some dialect or other, it also represents a kind of character, Osaka people and Osaka language. And Kansai people and Kansai language are supposed to have certain characteristics. They're seen as being warmer, less formal, less obedient to rules, but often also rougher and tougher and perhaps even in some cases a bit dangerous. And they're associated with comedy. Manzai pairs of stand-up comedians and other comedians often come from the Kansai region, particularly Osaka, and play up their accent for laughs. So that's something that also happens in anime and other fiction. The looser and less obedient to the rules stereotype is actually true. My sister, when she's in Osaka, usually gets around on a bicycle, and she says that whereas in most parts of Japan when you're cycling, if you come to a stop sign, everybody just stops and waits till it turns green. In Osaka, an awful lot of the time, people will have a quick look left, right, and if there's no traffic around, they'll zip across. Very unusual in other parts of Japan where cyclists and pedestrians would often wait at a red light at 3 a.m. when there's no cars to be seen in either direction. So what are the characteristics of Kansai Ben? It's actually a full-scale dialect, or not even one dialect, but a group of related dialects, and there's quite a lot of grammar and vocabulary to learn if we were learning the whole thing. But fortunately, in terms of what we'll actually see in anime and other fiction, there's a more limited range, because Kansai Ben can actually be confusing even to Japanese speakers of Tokyo Ben or other dialects. So what tends to happen in fiction 
is that certain Kansai characteristics are played up to mark out the speaker as a Kansai speaker. So this is actually a much easier job. So let's look at some of those characteristics. One of the more prominent ones is that E, meaning good, is pronounced E in Kansai Ben. And this sound shift also takes place in many other words that have the E sound, the E sound, or other sounds with E in, such as E, OI, AI. All of these often get transmuted simply into E. And you'll probably have heard this already even outside of Kansai Bem, because while it's a notably Kansai characteristic, it's also used by characters who want to sound tough. So you'll hear it particularly with schoolboys who are trying to sound tough and masculine because they don't want to sound like girls, which is a big concern with a lot of schoolboys until they grow out of it, by tough men, gangsters, sailors, etc. And it's not absolutely exclusively male either. For example, Akira in the anime Arya, when she gets angry, particularly with Alicia, often all her is and eyes and oys turn to air. And she's using that not because she's reverting to dialect, she's probably not originally a dialect speaker, she's using it in order to express her anger, rather than the way some English speakers of a particular type use the two beloved words, only a bit cleaner. And pronouncing sugoi as suge is even commoner. Some speakers, including female speakers, will use this sometimes. It's very informal, but it's a way of giving extra oomph to sugoi. Suge! So this is a characteristic of Kansai speech that isn't limited to Kansai speech, but a lot of the characteristics are limited to Kansai speech. And one of the commonest and most often used to mark out a speaker as a Kansai speaker is the use of the ending hen, which is nothing to do with the hen that means weird or unusual. This is an archaic helper that is used where standard Japanese would use nai. In other words, it's put onto the end of a verb to turn it negative. So, for example, wakara hen means not understandable. Deki hen means not possible. And we even have ara hen, which negativizes the verb of being. So where in standard Japanese we simply say nai, to mean that something isn't there, doesn't exist, in Kansai when we say ara hen. And this actually isn't unknown in standard Japanese, but it only exists as a fossil in the case of one particular verb, and the verb is masu. The negative of masu is masem. And this sem is really the same as kansai hem. The transition from s to h is a common transition in language. That's, for example, why solus in Latin, meaning the sun, is helios in Greek. Or why cent or per cent means hundredth part because cent and hund are originally the same linguistic element. Now, the way hen is used in Kansai, the most standard way, is exactly the same way that nai is used. That's to say it's attached to the a stem, just as nai is. But it can be attached in other ways. It can be just plonked on the end of a verb. It can be put onto the e stem. So it appears to be cobbled up in a variety of different ways. In fact, the reason is because it goes back to different dialectical sub-roots. But we don't have to worry about that. We just know that if hen is plonked onto the end of a verb, however it's done, it's going to have the same meaning. It's going to negativize it. And there are a lot of individual words that are used in Kansai Bem that again mark the speaker as a Kansai speaker. For example, akan is used where a standard Japanese speaker would use dame. Aho 
is used where a standard Japanese speaker would use baka. And in fact, in real Kansai, Ben, Aho and baka are both used and they have a slightly different implication. Aho is actually kinder than baka, but Kansai speakers in fiction will probably say Aho all the time because it's a Kansai word, it's part of the stereotype. And another very important thing to understand is that the copula Da in Kansai Ben is Ya. And De, which has two distinct meanings in standard Japanese, it can be the particle De, which marks a delimitation, or it can be the Te form of the copula, it has both these meanings in Kansai Ben, but it also gets used in place of Yo in standard Japanese. That's to say the particle that marks a piece of information the speaker ought to know. And this means that a very typical sentence ender for a Kansai speaker is Yade, which is the same as Da Yo in standard Japanese. And of course we're going to see this Ya in other places too, for example, sonan ya is the same as sonan da. Now, there are various other expressions and grammatical structures that belong to Kansai Ben and are often used to mark a Kansai character. And if you're interested in learning more, please give this video a thumbs up or make a comment and let me know that you'd like to hear more. And if you would, I'll make another video on more of Kansai Bem. If you don't want to hear more, please feel free to tell me that too. And if you have any other questions or comments, please put them in the comments below, and I will answer as usual. I'd like to thank my Gold Kokeshi patrons, my producer Angels, who make these videos possible, and all my patrons and supporters on Patreon and everywhere, because all of you are helping to make this possible. And I'd like to thank you for attending this lesson. Kore karamo, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Class dismissed.